to my friend Anna Morgan in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, calling me out here. So for you know the up and comers that are on the line that aren't yet uh, where a lot of you all are, when you are faced with you know executive leadership, um, our male counterparts that are interacting in a way that maybe is not the most professional and addressing us in a way that we're not comfortable with. Um, how would you advise women particularly to handle those situations in the moment? Um, because I you know, speak to job seekers quite a bit about why they're leaving. I've had my own experience and I know, you know, personally, when you're you're hearing or being addressed in a certain way, and in your mind, you're like, I'm I'm not that person. I'm not your dear. I'm not your daughter. I'm not your wife. You know these things. But you're in that moment of fight or flight and struggling to professionally address the situation. Um, so I'd be curious, because of your vast knowledge, you know, what you might advise in that type of situation. So I, I, I've had many situations where it's been that, and I've been burned too, because I've called them out in the meeting. Uh, and that didn't yeah. go so well. I, I, my, my biggest advice is take it offline, right? Yeah, that's the what I- The reality is most people, I, I tend to think the good in people, right? Versus immediately going to the negative. Um, they may not even be aware, right? That they're doing exactly. it. And so taking it offline and having a real conversation that also opens up better dialogue, right? Mm -hmm. Because the minute you call someone out in a meeting, they're embarrassed. They want to combat what you've just said. They become defensive. That doesn't help any relationship. It also makes right. it uncomfortable for everyone else. I think if it goes in a different direction around, obviously, where it's harassment, et cetera, like that, that's, that's an HR conversation. But I would say take it offline. Um, and yeah, that's you typically, know, you know, always take 24, 40 hour, 48 hours to let, you know, process any decision and then uh, look to our mentor to kind of check things and then uh, go from there. But, but, but I would um, say, you know, if, if you come out of a meeting and you're feeling very uncomfortable, you know, the best thing to do is say, because a lot of times people forget too, right? I mean, we're so busy. Is, is sending an email or saying, hey, listen, I, you know, I, I just want to cover a couple of things offline that were discussed in the meeting. Again, the reality is that person probably didn't even realize it and will likely be thankful to you for bringing it to their attention. I had a boss um, at Bank of America that was a massive hugger, like, and he was not a bad guy. I love him. He's a mentor. But I wasn't uncomfortable with it when he would hug. Others were uncomfortable. They're like, oh, he is like very touchy feel didn't bother me because I knew there, he's just, that's his guy. He's like Joe Biden, <laughs> Joe Biden. Um, but, <laughs> um, or Andrew Cuomo, but it didn't bother me, but it made on others. So I remember someone addressed it with him. It wasn't even directed towards them. They went to him because then he had a conversation with me and said, someone actually brought me in their office and said it made others uncomfortable. Does it make you uncomfortable? I didn't even realize that he was really doing it. Um, but I think just having that open dialogue, by the way, if, if the person is not willing to, to even consider, then, you know, then it's a whole different conversation. But I just, I am such a fan of having conversation, even if it's like, let's go grab a coffee. So we're not in the office, yep. right. right? You make it much more personalized than personal. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, great leaders, I think, you know, they praise in public and they criticize and coach and do do those things. 